Hi guys, John here, Mr. Forex Fire. So it's been a while since I've done a video, to be honest. Uh, a lot of things catching up with us and things like that. But I thought I would put one together today. Uh, it's just a small video. Uh, we're going to be going about, obviously, you've got smart money concepts. You've got retail methods and things like that. But I just want to go over something today where you can talk about how to get through support and resistance levels, which are going to be sort of high probability areas of uh, tests and uh, basically support and resistance. So I'm going to show you how to draw them up on the chart. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. And then from there, what we'll do is in further videos, I think what I'll do is I'll slowly introduce a few other things to show you how you can use these these methods or this setup that I'm going to show you where and how we can incorporate fibs at a later date to be able to incorporate it on your support and resistance and trade these things. Okay, so I'm just going to head over to the screen and just take notes if you need to. You know, we're just going to make this simple. <clears throat> I'm going to try and make this as simple as it here. <clears throat> Excuse me. A bit of a bad chest. So what I'm going to do is see me at my face a little bit bigger. Right. So you'll see here we've got the USDJPY. Okay. And the first thing we're going to do, we're just going to minimize that. Uh, let's just have the chart on itself. First thing you're going to do is basically we're going to do from top down to uh, bottom, okay? And we'll, when you're talking about putting in support and resistance on things like the five minutes and things like that, it's pointless because <clears throat> there's too much fluctuation with that. I'm gonna show you how to do it on a monthly, a weekly, and then daily setup. But not only that, these are gonna be significant areas for when you do break it down to sort of lower time frame. These areas that you that you'll see that you've done on the monthly, weekly, and daily, even though you're down on the 15-minute chart or the one-hour chart, you can go from a zone to a zone and trading. Okay. So first of all, if we take it up to the monthly, okay, and what we'll do is you'll put it straight onto a line chart. Okay. So what we're generally going to do when we're marking these up. You're going to put a vertical line, okay? Now, the vertical line, you want to go anywhere up to around about, uh, let's see, a year. Uh, in this instance, we're going to be taking it to we're on 2022 on obviously March, April. In fact, we'll come up to me here. Let's take a look. So if I take it back to around about March 2021, okay? So what we need to do, we need to put in the extremes, okay? And... Where we're at at the moment, I'm going to put this on, on price where price is now. Make sure you have this on a solid line and you want to put this as the coloration. So we've got red. So you want the ultimate turning points, okay? And what I mean by ultimate turning points, you're going to be talking where we get a definitive turn, okay? So we've got that. We've got one here. We have one here. And because we've got more or less double touches on here. In fact, let's let's just put it on there. Well, and then you'll see what we're doing the next bit. Okay. So that, that's going to take you on your monthly. Okay. So these are definitive areas of where we've got 
turning points. Okay, we've caged <clears throat> the price in. From there, we're going to take it down to the weekly. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, now on the weekly, we're going to have a different color. And we're going to have this as orange. Okay. And there's a reason why I have these on, to be fair. I'm just going to put that up there for now. Uh, and again, what you need to do is you sort of tidy these up the best you can. Okay, so what you've got is you, your monthly ones, you need to sort of bring them into the apexes. One here. Again, we'll bring this one into a roundabout there. Stretch this into here. Bring this into here. Now we've got this will look messy when you first start doing it, okay? And then from there, you're going to be going down to a daily, okay? Now, when you get down to the daily, you need to bring your vertical line in and bring it into the last few months. So obviously we're on here, we're on April. So you want to bring it into around about, say February, the first week of February, right? Okay. And you've got to make these lines black. Okay. And again, you don't want something where there's a slight kink. There's got to be like a shark fin or something where it's come round, if you know what I mean, uh, where there's been a definitive turning point. Okay. Yeah. Let me see if we've got one there. And that's a roundabout it for that. Uh, we then can go back to the candles, okay? And you can see on here how these areas are being respected. Let's get rid of that. Go back up to the monthly. And then the fibs, so the push started here on the on the swing point, which is the first green candle. Take a look, I'll get this right, because this isn't a complete leg at the moment. So we'll do it from a completed leg, okay, on the monthly. You, what you'll do is you look at the swing point and you want the first colored candle, which is going in the direction. So it's from here. You pull it down to its lowest point, which is there. So it's there and it's here, okay? So that is a leg, that is a completed leg, okay? Now, what you need to do is, because this is a monthly, your red lines on, the support and resistance on the line chart, okay? Those were the monthly. So you need to have this as your red, okay? And we're putting these in on the, the 23. And again, we're gonna distinguish the fib lines to the, the general support and resistance. So we want a dotted line and we want them red, so you want them on the 23, the 38, the half, and 
the 618. Now you can see some of these <clears throat> are coinciding with the areas we've got on OK. And again, we just want to make sure we've got it on the top and the bottom of that fib area, OK? Now we do the same with the weekly, OK? Let's take a look at the weekly. Down the daily. Right, so on the daily, so the green wick to the green wick, okay. <clears throat> no, the daily, the daily was a black line, okay, so black dotted. So we're going to do again, 23, 38, 50, And six one yet. Let's have a look. And then again, swing point. Swing point. Then we want to take the fibs out. Now these would be your zones that you would work with. Okay. That's higher. Go back down to the hour. So what we've done in essence, <clears throat> excuse me, we've gone from a monthly down to a weekly, down to a daily. And we did it from a year of data on a line chart. We've done the combination of the red lines for the monthly, the orange lines for the weekly, the black lines solid for the daily, okay? And then what we've done is we've gone back to the top side, which is the monthly, and we've looked for, for, for the swing points and we've put in or we factored in on the monthly We've done on, on the Fibonacci's, as you can see on here. Let's get rid of this. On the Fibonacci's, what we've got is the one, the zero, the 0 0.23, the 0 0.38, the 0 0.5, and the 0 0.618. Now, when we mark those up, they coincide with a dotted line, okay? So what happens is, we can see that these are heavily respected Fibonacci levels. Just make my face a little bit bigger. So when you're going down to the one hour and things like that, you can see there should be, based upon the dotted lines, when there's a break and a retest, these, these sort of Fibonacci levels, you'll see to be break and retests and respected, respecting price. And you can see on here, we had one here. We've added here. You can see here multiple times. This here has got a dotted, a dotted black line, but it's also got uh, a solid red. So there's a monthly level line there, but also there's a Fibonacci level on a black line, which the black line was the daily. So again, the red, let, let's just put this in layman's terms. The red is a heavily respected monthly support or resistance area, okay? When we drill down to the Fibonacci levels, and I put that, I put in the black dotted on the 50, the 0.38, the 0.23, the 0.618, 
Look what's overlaid on the top of that monthly line on the Fibonacci. Look at how many times, and this is going down to the one hour. It's respected massively, massively respected. Now, I, I normally draw these out each week, okay? I'll work with these levels on a day-to-day -day basis, week on week. When it comes to the end of the week, uh, I'll generally reset them and then I'll redraw them because obviously we've got a new week's worth of data. Uh, during the week, I will never sort of add to these. These are the levels I work with for that week. So when price is moving around, we can see it's respect. And you can see on here, we've had a bounce off on the monthly here. Uh, and so on, you know, I mean, you can see on either levels how they're coming in to retest the zones. It's bouncing between zones uh, on here, bounce, 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 and it's coming up on here, on here. And it goes without saying how powerful that this is. Now, what I want to do is put a few other things in with this as time goes on to show you how you can trade this, okay? So I just want you guys to get practice in drawing these up. Watch this video back on how to draw these levels. And what I'll be doing is I'll be putting one or two other things inside of this with regards to how you can trade it using a Bollinger Bands uh, breakouts and further Fibonacci levels as well, okay? So I just want you guys to get used to, to drawing these sort of things out. And then uh, what we'll do is as time goes on, I'll possibly be doing a few bits of homework and things like that to see how you can make this to your advantage, okay? Because these levels, <clears throat> these levels are very advantage. Uh, they give you a, a, a really big advantage, you know, uh, with regards to trading from zone to zone when you get a breakout and things like that. Because basically when you're getting a breakout from one zone, it will generally head towards the other, okay? So I hope that makes sense. This isn't about uh, getting you to trade on this straight away. I just want to get you guys to get used to sort of uh, drawing up true support and resistance levels. Forget about drawing support and resistance on anything from the one, even the four hour. Forget about drawing them on the four hour downovers. You need to draw your levels from a monthly, a weekly, and a daily, okay? These levels are target areas for when you're looking from a lower time frame as aspect uh, to be able to get in and drill your price and ease in, okay? It's, it's enough I'm gonna be saying on that for now. I've waffled on a little bit too much to be fair, but we'll be bringing a little bit more of this into the group as time goes on and factoring in a few other things. But you will find even if you, if, even if you use this, you can even use it upon smart money concept as well, but it's a way of putting true levels on your charts. Okay guys, I'll speak to you later.